Hi everyone, Rob from MHRCraft here. And the other day, I made a video detailing my design for a three repeater combination lock. Um, since then, I've not only improved on the previous design, I've come up with a new design for a four repeater combination lock. Uh, if you want to skip to that part of the video, because I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the improvements that I made on the first model, uh, feel free. I'll summon a magic annotation, and it should appear right now. Haha. <laughs> magic. Anyway, so um, I'll get started with the changes that I made on the first model. So uh, I have some new terminology for, these, for this now. Uh, the repeaters on the white wool, that's basically the key. And the repeaters on the red wool are the tumblers. And that's why they need to match to the same number, essentially, when they both go through each other, uh, in order to activate the AND gate. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, so the improvements that I made on the first model was before I was using a two block, two to redstone torch, one redstone dust uh, pulse limiter. The problem with the redstone torches I found was that they got really buggy sometimes. Uh, just a little. I could get them to work reliably, but this model is much more stable. Uh, the disadvantage, I suppose, is that it uses uh, sticky pistons instead, which, depending on how you want to go about getting those, could be a problem. Uh, yeah, I guess the other advantage is it's slightly smaller. It's an 8x14 grid instead of a 9x15. So, you know, small little changes. It works the exact same way as before. Hit the button makes the door go. Hooray! Uh, with the sticky pistons, though, you're allowed to make a much shorter pulse um, go through. And, like I said, more reliably. So, uh, the pulse needs to be set to 2 when it's touching the piston, and 1 when it's touching the block. And I throw these, pistons, these uh, repeaters on the other side and set them to 3, because without them... Uh, it sometimes doesn't hold the charge quite long enough for the AND gate, but it, does, it doesn't hold it long enough for any of the wrong numbers, as I will show you right now. See? Awesome. My next model is uh, one stacked on top of another, and this is useful. Uh, because, I mean, if you wanted to have multiple ones of these for different codes, uh, you'd want them all in this very well contained. You wouldn't want them everywhere. And it looks much nicer. So, the top one, I believe, is controlling the door, and the bottom one is controlling the note block. So I'll just show you right now what happens if the bottom one's wrong, and the note block doesn't go off. And you can expect the same for the door. Is that right? No. Alright. The next model is the same, except the button's on top, and it's a descending model. Because the odds are you'll probably want this buried in the ground. And the button closer to the surface. Maybe. So the bottom one controls the note block, and the top one summons a minecart. That has a lovely cow in it. Hello, cow. Awesome. Um, as a last closing note, on uh, on the on this model, because the uh, at least with the previous model, I haven't actually tested it for this model. I assume it's a little bit better. The previous model, you needed to make sure that in between the key repeaters and the tumbler repeaters, you needed to have the exact same number of repeaters. So if you were extending the line, you would need to make sure that there was the same number of repeaters between those the the set. And it needs to have around the same amount of dust in order to make sure that the line's going to get there on the same time to do that. All right. Now, here we are with the fourth model. Or, yeah, the fourth model, which also happens coincidentally to be the model that has um, a four gate, a four and gate, who knew? And, uh four repeaters. Uh, if you skip to this because of the annotations, I summoned a cow with one of the previous ones. That cow is important. Because with the right code, 
I'm going to be shooting arrows at the cow. Sorry, cow. It had to be. So, just to prove that if you get it wrong, it doesn't submit the pulse. What was this code again? Four, three, two, one. No, 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 no. I'll just look at this one, and it will tell me. Of course. And let's try this one more time. The wrong code. And nothing. Awesome. Yay! <laughs> so, um, yeah. The difference in using four repeaters instead of three? Quite a bit. This would give you 256 different combination you know, possibilities. Quite a lot. So, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think that's all I had to say. Oh, I do suppose I will show you this. So, an interesting thing about the way that this entire structure is set up, you can power it. And it will be if it's right, you know, with a if you with a lever or a torch. And if it's right, it will um make the model go off. However, if it's wrong and you power it, it's not gonna let you sit here until you get it right. So you still have to actually enter in the code. I might as well take this leather. Ooh, cow tipper. <laughs> so I just realized I didn't really uh show you the model, which, <laughs> that would have been silly. Um, just like the previous three model over there with the sticky pistons, it has a delay of two going through the piston and a delay of three going into um, the gate. And the four gate is this simple to make. I've seen a lot of other models for four gates, and they're always a little bit more, I won't say complicated, but usually wider or... Eh, different. I like this model. So, um, I'm not going to show a step-by-step, -step because this should pretty much be all you need to see in order to understand it. Uh, the cool thing about the four gate, or the four repeater, is that you don't need the inverted torches. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly is different between the three gate and the four gate for that, but even if the code is very close... It does not need those inverted torches, like my other models do. So, yeah, now I'm going to end it. Thanks.